Today we're going to be studying about changing meters and asymmetrical meters. To start with, with changing meters, we want to look at some of the indications that they have in the score. We often see markings like this, where you see one unit equals another unit. And that is there by the composer to help you understand the transition from one meter into the next. It is essential when doing changing meters to make sure that the unit stays consistent. That's really, really important for this. The examples that I have on the board are associated with your G1, G2, and G3 examples in your book. When we look at the first one, we see this quarter note equals quarter note, indicating that throughout, the quarter note is going to stay the same. And that's helpful for you as a, as a conductor so that you know exactly where the beat lies and all you're doing is changing a pattern. So when we look at this one where there's a 2-4 measure followed by a 3-4 measure, we're simply changing. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. The quarter note stays the same throughout the whole thing. Quarter, 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 quarter. When we look at something like G2, we see eighth note equals eighth note, indicating that the eighth note will stay constant from the beginning to the end. So, if we're doing this one and we see a 2-4 measure where there are eighth, 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 four subdivisions, and then we go to a 3-8 measure where there is one beat with three subdivisions, we know that that eighth note is going to stay constant. Eighth, 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 or one and two and one, two, three, one and two and one, two, three. The eighth note stays constant. If we look at one like this, this one might be a little bit more tricky. We're moving from two, four to two, two, but we notice that the quarter note equals the quarter note. When we think about that, we have two quarter notes in the 2-4 measure, but then we move here and we have half notes getting the beat. Quarter notes getting the beat, half notes getting the beat. But the quarter note is the subdivision. So we are in this case comparing the beat to the subdivision of the beat and saying that they will stay the same. Thus, as we're going through here, we would get quarter, 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 quarter. I'll say it this way while I'm pointing. Quarter, 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 quarter. And if I say it with the half notes so that we hear the difference. Quarter, quarter, half, half. Notice that the quarter beat stays the same all the way through. When we're doing changing meters, it is essential that we know that the unit needs to be constant and we need to be studying our scores early so that we know what exactly the changes are going to be. You don't want to show up in a rehearsal and not know where those changes are going to be and what they are. Up to this point, we have been doing symmetrical meters, meters that have even numbers of beats and subdivision of beats as we go through. We're now going to talk about asymmetrical meters, meters that have different amounts of beats and subdivision of beats within them. We're going to start with the five pattern. In this case, when we have five beats in the measure, we need to figure out, first and foremost, how those beats are grouped. There are two different groupings that we use. The first one, group one, has three beats followed by two beats. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This means that there is a stress on one and on four. 
in order to allow us to feel the grouping of three followed by the grouping of two. Our second group is this one, which is a grouping of two followed by a grouping of three. In this case, the stresses come on one and three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. These two groupings need to be conducted slightly differently. When we're dealing with group one, with a grouping of three followed by a grouping of two, we end up doing a pattern similar to this, where we can go down, in, in, out, up. Down, in, in, out, up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. When we're dealing with group two, where we have a pairing of two followed by a grouping of three, we end up having down, in, out, out, up. Down, in, out, out, up. One, two, three, four, five. These are the two different ways that we do our uh, five meters in a slow tempo. But if the tempo gets too fast, it would become very, very annoying to get ourselves going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 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 I mean, it's really, really hard to disseminate that when we're watching from the audience or from the ensemble. So, we use a different type for the faster meters. In this case, we use a two pattern. The two pattern is just like the one you've always been doing. One and two and. Except that because we have a grouping of three that's involved, we have to lengthen one or the other of the beats by one subdivision. So, in this case, a grouping of three followed by a grouping of two would be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. In this case, we're using the compound float that we learned from the last chapter along with our simple subdivision on the second beat. Float two, three, second. Float two, three, simple. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to give us what we need for our five beat to be truly uh, set up properly. If we're looking in this side with our grouping of two followed by grouping of three, we're just going to reverse it. We're going to put our simple on the first beat and our compound on the second. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so we notice the drag coming in on the upward motion rather than the outward motion that we had for this side. As you do fives, first and foremost determine what tempo your five is at. Then take a look and see what type of note is getting the beat and the subdivision of the beat so that you're sure that you're accurate on how fast all of your pulse is moving and all of your beats are moving. Then determine whether you need to be using a slower five or a faster five. Slower five or a faster five. Just as we did with the five patterns, we can now put our subdivisions into a seven pattern as well. The seven patterns have a slow and multiple fast versions. The slow version, right here, involves multiple moves to the right and left. As we go through it, it will look something like this. One, in, in, out, 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 up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My apologies, I missed the last one. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. That is the slow seven uh, pattern that we use. If we're using a faster seven pattern, we have some decisions to make. When we look at it, just like the five patterns, we have groupings. In the seven patterns, there are three different options for groupings. The first one is a grouping of three, followed by two groupings of two. When we do all of these faster versions, we are using a, a three pattern that is augmented, essentially. So, as we're doing this, we have a grouping of three, followed by a grouping of two, and a grouping of two. That means we're going to float the first one and then simple meter for the other two. Looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Long, short, short. Long, short, short. The second grouping has a grouping of two followed by a grouping of three and then another grouping of two. So we're going to get short, long, short in our pattern. Or you might say simple, compound, simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our third grouping has a grouping of two, followed by another grouping of two, followed by a grouping of three. And as you might expect, we have short, short, long, or simple, simple, compound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, score study is critical so that you know ahead of time what to do with all of these different, uh, these different meters. The other thing that is critical at this point is subdivisions. Subdivision in your head throughout the whole thing, whether you're doing a five pattern or a seven pattern, is critical. You've got to be thinking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or one, two, three, four, five. 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 Whatever it's going to be, you've got to be subdividing in your head. Here's a handy little shorthand that you can use as you're doing your score study, and it will help you in your rehearsal as well. As you're doing score study, look for groupings of two and three anytime you have five or seven meters. As we're dealing with the groups of two or three, anytime you have a grouping of two, use a little right angle sign. And anytime you have a grouping of three, use a triangle. As you're going through, if you write these at the top of your score, you will be able to much faster read what it is rather than trying to figure out where all the groupings are. If we look at this and we say, oh, okay, this is a 5-8 meter, and we've got a grouping of 2 followed by a grouping of 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or if we're doing a 7, and I see triangle right, right, I know that that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Use the shorthand symbols so that you don't have to read all of the notes during your rehearsal and it'll be a good reminder for what pattern you need to use.